the time is now. Let everyone in the listening audience grab their scriptures, a pencil, and a piece of paper. Listen and learn the true meaning of the Old and New Testaments of the Bible, the Psalms of David, the Lost Books, and the Holy Quran. There are no more secrets. All false things will perish. So come and learn the undisputable teachings of the only man that has the answers to the problems of a troubled world, as Sayyid al-Mama Isa al-Hadi al -Mah. And now, the true light, featuring Is Sayyid Al Imam Isa Al Hadi Al Mah. Uh, you saying that uh, back in the days, uh, the giants in the earth were those days were uh, the uh, uh, called Jabarians. Because you have two beings mentioned right there in that quote. Right. Yeah. Jabarians is, is another word for them. It's from the word Al Jabaru. That's one of Allah's names again. What I'm trying to say is uh, the, uh, the devil had took on the form of the black man in, back in those days. That's what I'm trying to say. You're 100% right. That's something black people better realize. The first incarnation of the devil and his angels were black people. You know who they are? The Hindu. The Hindu religion is the religion of shaitan. If you really look at the Quran and really look at the different dis uh, depictions of what shaitan does, statue worship, Self-worship, you know, self deification the Hindu faith, they worship the cow. What is Surah Al-Baqarah about? Cow. The cow. They worship the monkey. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say he did to people who violated the, the Sabbath? Cast them into the... Turn them into monkeys. He, if they believe in the Kama Sitra, which is lucrative sex plays of bestiology. They have, they have pictures all over India of statues on walls of men having sex with animals. They call it the Kama Sutra. And in these laws, they practice all kind of forms of animal sex and free sex, etc. And this is a part of their religion, mind you. And all of it gets its root out of the Hindu faith. Watch out for these swamis and these yogas and this transcendental meditation. And all these guys are all agents of shaitan. You understand? That race that was manifest on earth like the Indian race. That is the form that the devil first took. He was black man with straight hair. You follow that? Right. And he later, through Ham, because remember, all of them died in the flood, and the spiritual parts of them, of Iblis and his angels, left. And the next incarnation of Shaitan was into Ham's head to possess him, to make him think of sodomy with his own father, Noah, which bred the fourth generation curse of Abras, which you all know as leprosy, which is the white man you see today. Okay? When you say uh, left, I mean, um, when you say leave, uh, going back... I mean, the same way Isa ibn Miriam tells people, and the same way Rasulullah Muhammad made his Isra, or Miraj, who went up, he dematerialized, he took his spiritual being, and left this plane, the devil does the same thing. Uh, in relationship with, uh, with Saturn, because I, I believe there was some mention... Saturn that. was the planet that they resided on. Remember, this is intergalactical traveling. This is not like Christianity. <laughs> they, they, a lot of Muslims are Christians, don't know it. They think heaven is just some place up there. And if you say up there where, if you try to define it in Arabic, you come up with Samawati and Samah, which means above or clouds. You follow? When you start saying where, where did this angel? Gabriel came to Rasulullah in the 40th Hadith, his 40 recognized 
uh, accepted hadith by all Muslims. They consider them the best hadith. In them, they speak about the angel Gabriel coming to Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam, while he's with some of his followers, and he has a black beard and a white robe on. Correct? And they point out how gleaming white his jalabiya was, and they said he had no signs of travel at all on his jalabiya. But yet this angel had on a robe. Now let's be for real. Either we disregard this hadith as something somebody made up, or we accept that angels wear clothes. You understand what I'm saying? Right. Now, if this angel had on a white, glittering jalabiya, what are they made from? Material. They're made from cotton, right? Or muslin, or some other what? Fabric, which is either natural or synthetic. Now, let's eliminate the synthetic fabrics, because we know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to have synthetic fabrics in heaven. Correct? Right. But this angel came and he had on a white robe. And don't think this is trivial, this is important. But y'all don't want to talk about these things because they start to come babble the mind. You follow? Now, you telling me that he had a, a cotton, if there's a cotton robe, then they grow cotton and somebody's cotton pickers. Either angels or cotton pickers, and he got white and black angels, and the black angels are cotton pickers, or somebody's a cotton picker. If it's made from the wool of a sheep or a lamb, then the poor animals have to be in fear of being shared in heaven. Correct? Right. Or somebody else is involved in that 40th hadith, and someone on earth met Gabriel and gave him this jalabiyah. This is, you have your choice. You pick from him. Right. You understand? One or the other. Right. Somebody met him and gave it to him, or they shear them in heaven, or they have cotton growing in heaven. Or Gabriel was a man. You follow what I'm saying? Right. Or he was just plain and simply a man. Which means that angelic beings incarnate as regular men and take on physical form and wear clothes and break bread. Like when the angels met Abraham, they sat down and ate with him. You understand what I'm reaching at? Yes, this is all by the leave of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as far as, uh, could you say every time? Kulli shayin min kul shifiyat Allah. Everything that happens is by leave of Allah in his hands, yes. I mean from the spiritual plane and into this, this, uh... Physical plane, yes. Yeah. Uh, what is the, with the meditation and you said the swamis and all that, or what... I'm saying that these be, men are jinns. I mean... If you're void of the soul force, what level can you reach as far as uh, elevating? You, you can reach the spiritual. So you have the physical plane, then you have the plane of force. Now, this plane of force is the life force, it's the nutrients in an apple. Like I explained to you all last week, an apple goes to paradise when it's grown ripe on a tree and a healthy man picks up a healthy apple before it has grown too ripe or before it is unripened. But when it is at its perfect stage, if a healthy man picks it up and bites into it, then that apple makes paradise. Think about what I'm saying. Oh, you understand? If it's overripe or falls from the tree, it has not made perfection. It is not doing what it was created to do by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If the sun overripes it or a lack of rain causes it to be unripe, it is not perfect. Right. You understand? Same thing with the spiritual part of man. Right. If man is being tuned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be at a perfect state when that transition is made. Right. Now, the life force in the apple you call nutrition. You can't see nutrition, can you? Right. But you see the block of the apple, the matter that you chew up. Right. Well, the nutrition in the apple is the plane of force which is responsible for how the apple grows and how much sugar we can develop out of it, how much nutritional value is in it, right. okay? Right. Now, its blueprint, you understand? Right. Its blueprint and its formula is etheric. And it comes from a higher stage. The, oh, the actual skin texture, the growth of it, how it will personify through the spiritual to the plane of force to the physical is called a blueprint. That place is the spiritual plane. You see that? Right. And then when the spiritual plane decides the formula necessary, it relays that message to the plane of force, and then growth starts to take place on the physical plane. So the devil himself can get as far as the plane of force and the spiritual plane, why he's able to interfere with the elements. 
why he's thrown off the weather because he is in tune with the spiritual plane he is not in tune with the soul he does not have a soul the soul is the light that sends emotions from Allah Ta'ala into the spirit which manifests through the plane of force and then incarnates in the physical being the emotional body he has instinct but he doesn't work off the same emotions you do. This is why, and y'all usually laugh when I say this, but it's not funny. This is why he can't dance. Because in order to dance, you must be in tune with the rhythm of the universe, the drum. You understand? Right. And I worked in a hundred recording studios, and the first thing they always lay down is the drum. You must lay the drum first, then you can put any kind of music you want around it, but the foundation of that music track is the drum. They get back to Africa, I don't care how they get there, but they end up back in Africa. Whether it's, whether it's Boy George, <laughs> or Led Zeppelin, or Sting, or any other of those master devils, they go back to Africa. Because the drum is the heartbeat of the universe. Your heart is a drum. Put your head against someone's chest, and you hear the rhythm. And we are in tune with that rhythm, and that's why when the music comes on, I don't care how cool you think you are, black man, black woman. If the music is right, your foot will pat. You could try to be cool. You could have on a three-piece suit, gray, in a vest, in a white shirt, and a blue tie. And walk by a music store, and James Brown is playing, and something inside you goes, ow! Then you check yourself, <laughs> and you continue to walk on normally. Black, don't, you can't fool me because, you know, I've been teaching for years, and every time now and then I hear James Brown, and my body goes, whoa. <laughs> you know, like I say, James Brown got a serious connection to black people, even though we see him as some mop head, ham hock, Uncle Tom looking cool. His music will affect you. I don't care who you are. You could be Jamaican and be deep into reggae and hear James Brown and go, yeah, I can relate to that. You know who else does that? Bob Marley does that to Americans. Americans can pretend they don't like reggae. And they say, I like a little Bob Marley, though. Because Bob Marley got a way of getting inside through the drum where your body goes, yeah, I'm, I'm not into that, I'm into hip-hop, but Bob Marley's all right. <laughs> see, because we have something called soul. We are in tune with the rhythms of the universe and the pulsation necessary for creation and life. The white man does not have it. Put on a James Bond record and watch that fool try to dance, and it's the funniest thing you ever want to see. Now you say... Well, nowadays, a lot of white people are dancing. And my answer to you, like I said, I spent a lot of time in the recording studio. They're not dancing. They have changed the music. They got black people now dancing to white people's music. They took hip-hop and put all these rock groups in it, and they took it away from the black man, and now these rock groups are doing rock music and rapping to rock. They took away the hustle. They took away Latin. You understand that? The mumbo, the cha-cha, the Latin, they took away the, the uh, shuffle and the two-step, the stuff we would do rhythmatically, and they put it into something else. They took away ska, and now they got dub. They took away all of our natural rhythms and replaced them with synthetic rhythms. Now black people are starting to say, I like Michael, what's his name, Michael George, George Michael. I like George Michaels. I mean, I mean, I mean, some white people got soul. No. No white people got soul. The Quran told you that the devil is a deceiver. He makes evil look good. Now there's no more black music. The new generation can't dance. They can't move. They walk like white people. They act like white people. They're losing their soul for the love of money. And then it says, what profit a man to gain the whole world and lose what? His soul. That's the only thing we got left. Why? Because Isa al Masih said, we are the what? the salt of the earth and what good is salt once it loses its savor you know what the savor and the salt is the taste once you take out the taste what good is salt this is what those Pakistanian Muslims and Egyptian Muslims come over here and do to brothers they take the Africa out of them and make them think they're Saudi Arabians or make them think they're Egyptians white Egyptians that is not black ones because the black ones had soul or make them think they're Pakistanians and they take away your soul. There's no dancing in Islam. There's no proof that there's no dancing in Islam. In fact, there's multiple proofs of hadith where Rasulullah told them, where are the duffs? Where's the drum? The Ansars like the drum. They like music. <laughs> you follow? There's no such thing as Muslims are not supposed to dance. They take that away because with that, we, that's how we united. You get some music playing and black people get together. Is that right or wrong? Right. 
The devil does not have a soul. And the devil is in El Islam, spreading this fake Islam around the world, calling it Sunniism, calling it Shiaism, giving it names and, and denominations, and making me and you hate each other. We are simple people, and the Holy Quran tells us how we get our salvation. And it tells us in the Holy Quran, the second chapter, the 130th verse, by following Mila Ibrahim al Hanifan, for us to keep Abraham's religion. Muhammad Rasulullah did not come with a new religion. He came with the religion of Abraham. He just came to complete. Akmel to it says in the Quran. This day, Al-Yom Akmel to this day I completed for you. Not this day I perfected, I completed. Kamala means to, to, that a man completed a job that someone else started. Rasulullah Muhammad came to complete the job of Isa Rasulullah, wa Musa Rasulullah, wa Noah, wa Ibrahim, wa all the other Rasulullah, all of the other apostles from Allah. This is all Rasulullah Muhammad came to complete. And we don't have the right to make no new religion up. And now Muslims in the world today have a new religion. If it's different from Judaism, and I don't mean Judaism by the so-called Jebusites, those so-called Yaku's grafted devil, not that Judaism. I don't mind if it's different from the practices of Nabi Ibrahim, the Hebrew, then it's not Islam. Then it's something man has made. Okay? Yeah. In relationship to the, the chakras or the, what, the seven, seven, uh, seven uh, states or planes, uh, how does one relate to the other with that? The seats of the body. Those are nothing but central points where and the energy centers in the body that affect different functions in the body. It's like uh, the seven seals, you see, of, uh, of the scripture. Each seal was opened to reveal a certain incident. Each one of those centers in your body, whether it's the thyroid or the pineal, you follow that? Right. Uh, sending off a certain... Uh, electrical impulse which results in a certain holler or aura as you would call it color which affects certain glands in the body and affects certain energies that are coming into the body this is your force field this is your etheric self this is your holler your aura in Christianity when sometimes they draw a picture of these people they put this big halo on their head this is what that represents and those seats are uh, seats in the body that affect certain parts of the nature of the human being uh, how does that affect you when as far as when you leave this plane of existence when you leave this it goes with you body? It goes with you because the colors of the lights change according to the emotions and the emotions are projected down into the body from the soul. So as that man starts to leave, all his emotions go with him because they're the recorded. Those are the recorded records. It's recorded in light. So the level that you develop on earth, it, uh, it has a bearing to do when you leave this plane of existence? Uh, and going into the next. Taban. Yeah, taban. of course, exactly. Uh, how does that compare with the, uh, the, the two... Uh, 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 leaving this life and the two an angels questioning you on Tahid, how does that... That's, that has to do it while you're in the grave, within the 48 hours after you leave the physical body, as right. rigor mortis is setting in, that's why a Muslim must be buried within 24 hours, because right. the next 24 hours is when those angels will come and ask you, Men Rasulullah, who? Men Alladhi Rasulullah, who is Rasulullah? And you can either be afraid and say, I don't know, or you can say, Muhammad Rasulullah. You see? Right. Which will determine whether or not you are an inmate of paradise or not. They'll, they'll ask you certain questions. Okay? Okay. Shukran is it. I always, like, um, I always, as one, one brother before was explaining to me, like, uh, talk about fear of Allah. And uh, another brother explained it to me, like, love. Love for Allah. The second chapter of the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, in the second verse, the very last word is the word taqwa. Yes. It's, it reads That's like, the first verse reads, starts off, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, Alif Lam Mim. Then here we go, it says, Zalik al Kitabu la Rayba fi Huda lil Muttaqeen. That Muttaqeen right there is the word taqwa. And when translated, it means, Zalik this al Kitabu scripture. La Rayba does not have any doubts in it. Huda, it is a guidance for Lil Muta, the ones who are very taqwa. The ones who are, who, they always say, who keep their duty and things like that. It means those who, who have a certain type of, that's why I said it's more than just fear, it's reverence. That is a love. You would have a love for your father. 
but you'd also have a certain amount of reverence for your father if he's a righteous man. You follow? So if the brother's telling you that taqwa can also mean love, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that translation. Because mm -hmm. remember, there is no real good English translations to Arabic anyway. It's so difficult to get a good English translation. I'm speaking to the brother at the mic. Yes, but if someone you. said, you know, that it could also mean love of Allah, very good. It's, a it's still a beautiful translation of it. Okay. You know what I mean? It's not worth the argument. Because the main thing is that you understand by whether I say it or that he says it, that it has something to do with respecting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? Whether it's in love or whatever. Yeah, I, I wanted to, the reason I asked him that because like, um, I, when I first uh, got into Islam, I was like wondering why would somebody, um, why would Allah tell somebody to fear him more than to love him? That's why I went. Right. That's why I said it's not, that's why I said many Muslims mistranslate it as the word khaf. The word khaf is fear. Allah, that, and that's not what Allah is asking you to do. He's asking you to do this. Alhamdulillahi. Be grateful and because he is Rabbil Alameen. Because he sustains everything. For instance, like, if I ask you to raise your left hand, you can do it, right? Yeah. Or if I ask you to blink your eyes twice, you can do it. Yeah. Tonight, if you eat something, you'll taste it. Um, and this may sound trivial, but it's not. You can lift your left leg, can't you? Yep. And you can twist your body. You know how many people are born in the world who cannot do that? Who are not fortunate like you and I, that all of their limbs work, that they can hear, that they can taste, that they can feel, that they have two legs and two arms and a heart that works and lungs that breathe and liver that functions. You know, there's a lot of human beings because of shaitan's intervention that has disrupted the natural system of things working from the spiritual plane, which affects the plane of force, which of course crippled people and blind people to come into the world, and people cannot do that. So when we say we have taqwa Allah, it's that. It means that I'm so grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all of the boundless gifts that he has given me as my sustainer. That when I hear his name, something inside of me says, Ya Allah. Someone says, Allah says, Ya Allah. You can feel that he was good to you. And he means you well. And if anybody is messing up along the way, it is not him, it's me. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. So that feeling inside that makes you, when you're getting ready to do something wrong, and you say, I know this is the wrong thing to do. Ya Allah and Surni. Oh Allah, help me. That thing that you beseech in him that makes your body feel like an insignificant thing, when you're at that state, you're in a state of taqwa. And that's what every Muslim should try to stay, or strive to be in a state of humbleness in the presence of Allah Ta'ala. You see? I want to ask him about uh, why the us about uh, people be I thought that was in the Quran by the token of time. I want to why the us the surah why the us the inna al sanan la fi kus ila al dina aminu wa aminu salih hai wa tawassal bi haki wa tawassal bi sabr. And I always had it. Um, I thought it was the why the us was by the token of time. Well, let me let me do this for you. The brother I want him to write ain sad ya ra on the blackboard. Ain sad ya Right? You see that word? If you go to any dictionary and look it up, they'll say juice. Like if I said Asir Fawaki, I'd be saying fruit juice. If I said Asir Burtogal, I'd be saying orange juice. You follow? Now the root of it, Asara, without the yeah in it, means to squeeze the essence out of a thing. Okay? What happened is, the translators of the Qur'an, like Yusuf Ali, and Pikthal, and Mawlana Muhammad Ali in them, were Pakistanians, and their native tongue was not Arabic. You see? Their native tongue was Urdu, or English, or Ila Akhir, or something else. But it wasn't the Arabic language. So they did never have the Muslim or the roots of words in their Qur'an. They didn't know the roots meanings of words. Like when they use the word Quraysh, they don't know that the word Quraysh means a big fish. When they use the word Kawthar, they can't see Kawthar as, as a, a lake, a river in paradise. They only see it as from the word Kathir, meaning a lot, or most, when they say abundance. So here again, we have the same problem. I will explain this whole surah to you because it's short, and you might see what I'm talking about, okay? All right. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والعصر و is called قسمة it means I swear by قسمة والعصر now here's the most important thing 
remember that this is Malaik Jibrail, the angel Gabriel. He's speaking, Rasulullah Muhammad. He's speaking with Muhammad about this. He's giving it to him. Alright? It's Ja'am in Quran like that. He says, Wal Asr, I swear, now watch where time comes in. By the time, meaning that point when man is separated from his body, when he is squeezed out of his body, when he's standing there just a soul without this physical body. Well Asr. In uh, surely El Insana. Remember I said Allah said in Surah Alaq that He created El Insan Min Alaq. Remember that? Khalaq al Al Insan Min Alaq. That He created man from a, a, a clot that splits. Well, that clot is that body again. And He says, after He says, by the time when man is squeezed from his body, in Al Insana La Fi Khusr. The word La Fi means He'll be in a state of. Because lost. If he's in a line to run a race, he's already lost before he started. So what is Allah telling us? Based on Yawm al-Ahri and now, when this Quran is coming, he's saying, Rasulullah, based on between now and the end of time, based on that period, when man is going to be squeezed from his body and just be a soul, man is losing. He is losing this battle against Iblis, against Shaitan. He is losing. Shaitan is winning this battle. When you base it on from this time, the year 610, when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was starting to receive the Quran, based on then till the end of the world, Muhammad, based on that, y'all are losing. That's what it's saying. Well, Asr, in al insana lafi khusr. Then he says to him, Illa al-lavina amanu, except. Now he gives him an exception here. Illa, except for Al-Lavina, those who Amanu. They have faith. Wa and Amilu Salihat. And they work to fix things. They're not, not perfectionists. They work to perfect a thing. The word Salah in Arabic is the same word for fixing a broken toy or fixing a wheel on a car. And the word amala as opposed to the word fa'ala. See what they do is they take the word fa'ala and say it means to do and to work. And that's wrong. Fa'ala means to do and act in a form of a verb. But amala is to employ in the service of doing something. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So here Allah does not use fa'ala. He uses a Mila. He says, Illa al-Ladina amanu from the word amin, honest and trusted and faithful. Amanu wa amilu salihat. Except for those who are faithful and they work to fix themselves. What do you mean by fix ourselves? How are we broken? We were broken when we separated ourselves away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Jannah. When man got away from communicating with Allah, when man turned away from obedience to the prophets, when man turned away from listening to the angels, man became a broken creature. He's no longer directly in tune. And Allah sent this Quran al kareem to put us back on this right path. This, uh, Allah sent this Rasulullah Muhammad with his sunnah to put us back on this right path. But are we following it? No. We read it. We know what he did. We read about Rasulullah. It tells us how Rasulullah dressed. The Quran says Muhammad is the best of examples, but do Muslims dress like him? No, they still got on American clothes and they're dressing like polytheists and Christians. It says Rasulullah wore a beard. Muslims say that there, but do they wear a beard? No. But yet they say, I follow the Sunnah. Rasulullah set up a community in Medina where Muslims supported themselves. And he had laws that they lived by in that community. But are Muslims doing that? No, they're outside working for the Jew. What is the Jew? The Jew is the devil that opposes Islam. So he had his brothers employed in the Board of Education or security guard or something helping the state of New York and the city, which is ruled by the devil who opposes Islam. And he justifies that as saying he has to support his family instead of us doing what Rasulullah did. Rasulullah was reduced down to nothing. The people of Mecca, his own people, persecuted them until they had nothing which resulted in his uncle's death, his wife's death, his son's death, and he was utterly depressed. He had nothing but what? He had what? Iman. He had Iman. He had faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's all he had. He took that shot on faith and went to a whole new city, left Mecca and went to Medina and set up a whole community there. Because the people sacrificed and came together and worked as one family. 
Of course they had differences. There were different tribes there. And different tribes have different customs about the way they bury their dead, about the way their women dress, about what they eat and what they don't eat, about what they do if someone kills somebody in their family. They all had different laws. But they came together in Medina under the guidance of Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam who himself was discouraged when he had that, when he had that, that responsibility because he was hurting inside from the death of Umm Khadija. He was depressed himself. But Rasulullah pulled himself out of that and formed a community and they lived together and they sacrificed and they worked together and they came back to Mecca and they conquered in Allah's name. You see? So Muslims will listen all day and say they follow the Sunnah, say they want to practice Islam, but when you get right down to it, they're still working for the white man, still living in projects, ain't trying to build, won't come and form a community together, and if a community is built like our community, they try to find things about us that they don't like. Oh, we heard they do this, and I heard they do that, and I heard they do this, and I heard they do that. They're not really Muslims because they don't follow some Pakistani guy or some Egyptian guy. Because so, you know, if you'd be a real Muslim, you got to get sanctioned by some guy who graduated from the university in Egypt. Some guy in the University of Egypt decides who's a Muslim and who's not. And if not, you're not a Muslim. Minister Louis Farrakhan, as far as they're concerned, is not a Muslim. But Minister Louis Farrakhan is doing more for the black man in America than all of the imams in Saudi Arabia together. And they got more money than he got cells in his body. But these black men in America will go over there and love them to death and talk about Minister Louis Farrakhan and try to make him look like he's not a Muslim. Minister Louis Farrakhan is a hundred times more Muslim than all of the Sunni Muslims in this country because he supports his wife, which is what Rasulullah taught. He's clean. He doesn't smoke, he doesn't drink, he doesn't go out and chase women. He does all the things that Rasulullah taught. So he's a better Muslim than some guy who's walking around a long robe, a beard, smelling like perfume, but can't support his family. You better live with it. Am I right? That's right. What is a Muslim? A Muslim is a person who's at peace. Mr. Louis Farrakhan is at peace with himself because he's doing something that he's been taught by a man he respects. In regardless of whether you say what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught him is right or wrong, he believes it's right and he lives by it on a daily basis. Am I right or wrong? That's right. Is he supporting his own kids? Yes or no? Is he building his own nation? Yes or no? Yes. Is he depending on some Saudi Arabian or some Egyptian from some university to tell him how to think? What are you? You men. Where's your manhood? Some guy from India comes over and tells you because he graduated from some university, he tells y'all how to think. I'm a man. You understand that? And I'll put my hand in your hand, but I won't put my soul in your hand. And I'm definitely not going to put my son's soul in your hand or my daughter's soul in your hand. And I don't know what your soul is like. You understand what I'm saying? So this Quran here, when you talk about Surah Al-Asr, Allah Ta'ala is telling Rasulullah to the angel Gabriel that based on the time, when man is going to be judged, he's losing. Because y'all think y'all got Islam down right. You are losing the battle. Shaitan is winning. Why? Because me and you are fussing about this, and this one is fussing about this, and Sunnis arguing with this here, but they can't even get together and support their kids, open a school. Everybody flies off to Mecca for pilgrimage, come back smelling all nice, but ain't got no school him on Bedford Avenue. You understand what I'm trying to say? But let me finish this surah for you. He says, Illa ladina amanu, except for those who have faith, wa amil salihati. And they work, they work to perfect or, as you say, correct or fix themselves. Wa tawasaw bil haqqa. And what they do is they tawaba, they try to turn people or raise people and spend their life out there in what? Tabligh. They live their whole life in tabligh. Let me ask you a question between me and you, because we, we understand each other. We're from the same blood. You understand? Yeah. When you see an answer on the street, forget, forget his doctrine that you made, you know, that some people differ what we teach. What does the average answer man do all day? They are on the streets with tables or in pouches selling doctrine about Islam. Right? Propagating, arguing with people, teaching the truth. That's all they do all day. Some of them are doctors, some of them are teachers, and some of them were ex-criminals. But you see them all doing the same thing. Dressed in a long white robe, a white tagia, or a white Emma turban on, with a bunch of pamphlets in their hand, and a bunch of pictures and flags, and they're propagating things in the name of law from early in the morning when you're on your way to work, work to work for the white man, until you come home, on your way home to watch television, they're still out there. That's because we what? We, our middle Salihati, we work to try to perfect our people and get them back fixed. 
and we do what? What to our soul will hack. We spend our whole day, we've dropped our nets and became fishes of men. We spend our whole day, my whole life is propagation of Islam. Like, not like other Imams who teach on Friday and then on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, they got a job working somewhere else. Or got some grocery store selling pork. Or he's employed by some Saudi Arabian called Isnad. <laughs> or some other group, I spend my days and my nights in the propagation of Allah. So you can call me not a Muslim all you want. We'll see on Yaman Akhri who's a Muslim. Lakum dinukum wali What does it say here? That they spend their whole life bringing people to Al-Haq, to reality, the truth, reality. Is what Al-Haq really means, Haqiq. Then it says, Watuwa so bi sabr. And they also bring people to the reality of sabr, patience. Because in Islam, conversion is one thing, staying a Muslim is another. Most of you brothers who've been Muslim many years, how many guys you see in and out of their deen? Next minute, the brother got a reefer. He then fell away. How many brothers you seen like that? Be for real, if you're honest. They stay preaching al-Islam, next thing you know, they're back out there kafir. And they got some justified reason why they didn't turn away from Allah. I heard this, or I don't like this, I think this. It always, you know what it always starts with? Inna ni ana, I. I heard this, I think this, the way I feel we should be able to do this here. I don't like the way the community does this. I don't like what they did in Masjid Taqwa. I don't like Imam Sirajul Haj. I don't like Mr. Louis Farrakhan because he's a racist. I don't like Imam Misa. They make you scared. They say you can't. You always come out with you don't like. And they ain't got nothing to give nobody in the whole universe. Well, Asr, inna l'insan Allah fi khusr. I'm telling y'all people, based on now and the end of the world, y'all are losing. Shaitan is winning because Muslims are spending time arguing over stupid things instead of the fundamentals of Islam, which is Tawheed Wahdahu la sharika lahu The loneliness of Allah who has no partners. That's important. So that's what that says. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Well Asr. Inna linsana la fi khusr. Illa illadina amanu wa amilu salihati. وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالْحَقَّ وَتَوَاصَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ صَدَقَ اللَّهُ الْعَظِيمِ Sadaqa, truth, is from Allah, who is Al-Azim, supreme. Sadaqa Allahu Al-Azim. That's what it means. Now, I don't know what Yusuf Ali says, or what Milana Muhammad Ali says, or what Pictol says, or what anybody else says. If you go in a dictionary and break each one of these words down yourself and use your own soul, Get a dictionary and look at each word step by step. You'll see what it really means. Then you can take the Yusuf Ali and throw it away. With the Yusuf Ali Quran is a trick of the devil. Honorable Elijah Muhammad told his followers to use the Milana Muhammad Ali. Wallace D. Muhammad is bringing in the Yusuf Ali. Now the whole Arab world have agreed that the Yusuf Ali Quran ain't no good. But years ago when I was telling them that, they said Imam Isa is crazy. All the Sunni Muslims had the Yusuf Ali Quran. And I kept saying that's a poor translation of the Quran. That's a poor trans... Now in Saudi Arabia they're saying that's a poor translation of the Quran. No Sunni stood up and said, yeah, you know what? This crazy guy from Bushwick Avenue, Imam Isa, told us that way back in 1971. That that's a poor translation of the Quran. They're not going to come up and fest that reality. They're still giving it to their kids. Still poisoning them with this. How, how does a man like Ahmed Didat, who spent his whole campaign selling these Qurans, and then lecturing about the truth, how does he confess that he'd been practicing from the wrong Quran all this time? Because he's supposed to be such a scholar of the scriptures. How does he come up and say, I'm sorry to tell you all that Yusuf Ali Quran I've been using is wrong. In, and if Wallace D. Muhammad is so good in Arabic and works for the Saudi Arabian government, shouldn't he, being an Arabic scholar, have recognized that that was the wrong translation of the Quran? He should have saw that. Because as an Arabic scholar, you'd be able to look and say, that's not what it says in English. Because every time I look at an English Quran, I say, that's not what it says in Arabic. You understand? But no, y'all are still ain't going to confess the reality that you have a reformer amongst you. You want everything but what you're given. Just like in the garden. You want everything but what you're given. <laughs> Salaam alaikum. I want to ask him about the word mukminat, um, I mean mukminun, and the word Muslim. A believer. Anyone can be a Muslim, but anyone can't be a Muslim. I mean, anyone can be a Muslim, but anyone can't be a believer. That's very good. That's very good. You hear me? Yes. Yeah. That's very good. You know what you're saying? There's a word, mu'min. That's one of Allah's names. al mu'minu. And then there's a word, Muslim. That's one of Allah's names. As-Salamu. Both, both of them belong to Allah. Neither one of them really belong to us. Because both of them are His names. When we use the word al mu'min. It has its root word in amana, to be faithful. Many, many Muslims 
translated as believer. You follow that? A Muslim is not a believer. A Muslim is faithful. When you're faithful, you are loyal. To believe in something, you do not have to be faithful or loyal to it. I do not like to be called a believer of Allah. I like to be known as someone who is faithful to Allah's cause. You follow that? Then, the word Muslim does not mean one who surrenders. If the brother puts on the blackboard, seen, lamb, meme, seen, lamb, meme, and put a shadda on the lamb, you follow that? It looks like a little W over the lamb. That is another form. See, in Arabic, we have forms. This is a form that changes the word from the simple word seen, lamb, meme, meaning bliss or tranquility, to seen, lamb, lamb, meme, which means to give in or surrender. Now, when we take a three-part verb like salama and give it another form and put a alif on the front and then a seen, and then a lamb, and then a leaf, and a meme, we've now taken that three-part verb, which is seen, lamb, meme, and added to a leafs, and we will still not get a double L in there, we get the word Islam, meaning a state of peace. If we add a meme on the front of it, and go meme seen, lamb meme, we get the word Muslim. It still doesn't have a double L in it or lamb, it has the word mu, which means one who is. This is another form in Arabic grammar, and this means one who is of peace. If you put a shadda on that lamb, you get one who surrenders. Do you understand what I'm saying? So when you say a Muslim, you're saying one who's at peace. So we can say that we are mu'min, but it's difficult to say that we are Muslims, because we are faithful to Allah, but we cannot say that we are in the Darul Islam yet, the abode of total peace, because we are not at peace with ourselves yet, because the world we live in is not peaceful. So even if we make our salah five times a day, the air is polluted. Even you as a Muslim brother, you walk down Nostrand Avenue and some fool is cooking pork. You don't eat pork, but you got to smell this pork. He interferes with your peace, but it doesn't interfere with your faith in Allah. So it's easier to say that we are mu'min than to say that we are Muslim. And like I said, the Sunnis keep getting the words mixed up, so they keep saying one who surrenders. Surrenders and, and really would be one who is of peace. And if you are in a state of peace, you have to have surrendered to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to get to that state. You see? You have been listening to The True Light, sponsored by the Original Tents of Kidar, located at 717 Bushwick Avenue in Brooklyn, New York. You are also invited to attend the Questions and Answers class every Sunday from 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the Hall of Knowledge at 548 Hart Street in Brooklyn, New York. And now, more profound than ever before, the Pamphlets of Peace, authored by the Master Teacher and Spiritual Guide, as Sayyid Al-Imam Isa Al-Hadi Al-Mahdi, covering such topics as who's who on the planet Earth, the resurrection, who was noble Drew Ali, who was Jesus' father, who was Marcus Garvey, St. Paul, disciple or deceiver, and much, much more. Also, to aid your spiritual growth, we have a beautifully crafted hand-woven prayer rug designed by Es Sayyid Al-Imam Isa Al-Hadi Al-Mahdi. We also have a large assortment of prayer beads, Nubian and Sufi oils, and incense. The original tents of Kidar would like for you to write or call us and let us know how the true light has changed your life. Remember, above all things, truth is truth. That was the first five verses of Surah Al-Alaq, 
originally revealed to the Prophet Muhammad as the first chapter. It is today recorded as the 96th. As translated by as Sayyid al Imam Isa al Hadi al Mahdi, it reads as follows O seal of the Prophets of Allah, Muhammad, by the supreme sovereignty of your sustainer and creator, you are being ordered to read by beginning with the name of your illustrious sustainer, who is the creator of all things. He, Allah, created all human beings of a self separating. So read, because your sustainer is most generous. He, Allah, taught human beings what they would have never known. Rabbana 